Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jeff Allen. Thank you. It is nice to be home. Uh, I was in Arizona uh, the past week. By the way, uh, this is not the time of year to go to Arizona. You certainly don't want to fall for that dry heat stuff they give you. Doesn't feel 118, not feels 225, trust me. <laughs> I was over in Sun City, the retirement community. I don't know if anybody's been there, but the seniors drive golf carts and everything, licensed by the state. I only mention it because I saw one overturned in a ditch. <laughs> Some of you are as sick as I am because that was my reaction to that tragedy. <laughs> Come on, man, someone lost control of a golf cart. At what point do you voluntarily give up your driver's license? <laughs> Walk in, I quit, can't even drive a car. How'd you like to get the black box back from that accident? The pedal's stuck, I'm doing 11, no, 12. <laughs> I'm up to 14, I can't hang on. Tell the wife I love her. <laughs> That'll be great for the cops, they can just kind of run next to it. Come on, pops, pull it over. Where you going? <laughs> Got you doing a nine and a six, what's the rush? Come on. So my wife is here tonight. By the way, uh, we celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary last July. And, uh, thank you. And I knew it was a special anniversary, and I messed up the previous 19, but I wasn't going to mess this one up. So I went to her about a month out, and I asked her, I said, where would you like to celebrate? I know this is special. And I was thinking restaurant. <laughs> she almost hit me in the head with a brochure, and she says, Hawaii. You know, I'd be just as happy staying home as long as I was near you, Buttercup. <laughs> She's good. You want to be near me? Get on a plane. I'm going to Hawaii. <laughs> it was the first time in 10 years my wife and I got away from home alone together without children. So you parents know after 10 years, by the second day in Hawaii, we had no idea how to entertain ourselves. <laughs> it was the most pathetic display of human behavior I've ever witnessed. <laughs> Two losers standing in a hotel lobby. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. Want to eat? Yeah, we could eat. That'd be good. You want Mexican? I don't know. You get Mexican in Hawaii? <laughs> On the third day, we did what came natural to us. We just went to the beach and we started yelling at other people's kids. <laughs> yeah, leave your little sister alone. <laughs> Never mind. Who are we? <laughs> We're the loser beach patrol from Tennessee, man. <laughs> We have three boys that run our lives, and I gotta tell you, so we gave them biblical names, by the way. The first two were real easy, Aaron and Jacob. The, the three-year-old, we finally settled on Satan. <laughs> this kid is electric, man. He runs across the rug in his socks, the neighbor's garage door flies open. <laughs> My wife bought him a leash. Have you seen these things? This vest that slips over the kid, and this elastic band clips to her belt loop. It's a leash. And it's fine if you're just walking through the mall. Kids just flopping around behind you. Every now and then, they'll see something and shoot out in front of you like a skier in front of a boat. A big wide, and then he gets it. It's elastic, so it goes. <laughs> the problem arises when you stop to have a conversation in the mall. A couple weeks ago, we're standing in the mall, have, you know, we're talking. You know, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? <laughs> want to eat? Yeah, we'll eat. Now look at the kid, he's wrapping himself around his mother's legs <laughs> like a dog on a tree. And like a dog, can't figure out how to go back around the other way to unravel. So he stands there, pinned to his mother's thigh, <laughs> chanting, and you've all heard the chant. Mommy, 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 Stop. And, and apparently, this chant comes at a frequency my wife can't pick up in the mall. She's the only one not responding. I'm vibrating, man. I got blood starting to trickle out of ears. Some guy's on the PA in the mall. Please, lady, answer the child. Will you please answer your child? It was a mime in the mall. He came over, punched my wife. Your name, Mommy? It takes a lot of angst to get a mind to speak. 
And I went after that mine, but I couldn't get in that box he was in. <laughs> Turns out the kid wanted to go to the bathroom. That was it. We're trying to potty train him, our three-year-old. He's our third kid, and uh, we really just don't care. My <laughs> wife bought him one of those musical potty chairs. Have you seen these things? Every time he goes to the bathroom in it, it makes music. What kind of neuroses is this gonna create? <laughs> 30 years from now, I'll be laying on some shrink's couch. You know, I can't use the restroom unless I'm wearing a Walkman. <laughs> you know, Doc, that elevator ride up here about killed me. <laughs> I'm a freak. <laughs> and the diapers are getting on my teenage. I got a 19-year-old, a 15-year-old, a and a 3-year-old. 1915, 3. Oops. <laughs> Diapers are getting on the 15 year old's nerves. That's what he says. He stinks. That's when I know he's, he's had bad taste. He stinks. <laughs> I'm on the phone a while back. The 15 year old comes down in a panic. He goes, Baby just pooped his pants, stinking the whole house up. <laughs> All my friends are leaving. I said, All right, when I'm off the phone, I'll change him. He goes, well, You better hurry up because he took the diaper off and he's running around. <laughs> That'll get you off the phone real quick, won't it? Gotta go, poop boys on the loose. <laughs> so I go running upstairs, the baby runs by naked, completely covered in stuff, holding the diaper out, chasing the 15 year old's friends around. <laughs> this boy has no idea what power is, but he's drunk with it, I'll tell you that. He's just <laughs> laughing. <laughs> now my 15 year old's chasing him with the wipes. Grab him, Dad, I'll wipe him, grab him. <laughs> like a line drive, I went, whoa, I'm not touching that kid, man. <laughs> Get him on the lawn, we'll hose him off. You gotta have a plan. At one point, I was laughing, you know, until the kid ran in my room and jumped on my bed. <laughs> and that'll drain the funny out of every situation. You no know? <laughs> poop boy sitting on your comforter there, you know. <laughs> and you know if you move too quick in his direction, he's gonna scoot across your new comfort. <laughs> and I've been married long enough to know my wife wouldn't believe me, that's what I know. I'd be standing there like a moron. The baby did that. <laughs> you are getting worse. <laughs> we got the kids. Now my wife has uh, 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 is gotten on this quest to find something that we could do together. So last December, she came to me. This is what she says to me. I'm 48 years old. Remember this. 48. She comes to me in December. And says, you know what would be fun? I go, what's that? She goes, we should take up skiing this winter. That'll be fun. <laughs> take up skiing. Folks, I'm 40. I'm not taking up a dangerous sport like skiing at the age of 48. Told her, you could save me the cost of a lift ticket and throw me out a third floor window. <laughs> Told her, you want to ski, we'll buy a Nordic track. We'll just do it in the living room. <laughs> Turn the air conditioning up real high, get it nice and frosty, and every five minutes you can run in and smack me in the head with a tree limb. How's that? <laughs> So we were in Colorado last uh, January, skiing. <laughs> hey, I've learned one thing in 20 years of marriage, and this is it. Happy wife, happy life. That's what I've learned. <laughs> if you're married, you already know that. And if you're not married, pal, you better write it down. <laughs> and not on a napkin. You get a stone tablet and a chisel, Jack. <laughs> Be number 11 if you're counting them. So I've never skied in my life, so of course I get sent off to the bunny hill, which really does a lot for your manhood. <laughs> Guys in the shop are talking about purgatory, and you know, where are you going? I got a bunny hill. Ooh, let's step out of the way. And they had a rope tow. I don't know if you're familiar with that Nazi torture thing. If you, if you're familiar with a rope tow? Big rope on a pulley spins around. So you stand there, and so the theory is you grab it, and it pulls you up this little incline. I stood there five minutes, burned through four pairs of gloves. I didn't move an inch. Stand there, oh, this is worth 80 bucks. I almost died of smoke inhalation. The kids were roasting hot dogs over my hands. Somebody yells at me, grab the rope! So I grab it, right? It dirts me. I'm being dragged up the hill on my face. 
people are yelling, let go, no, I'm moving, yay, this is fun. <laughs> Next day we wake up, she goes, that was fun, let's try the, let's try the chairlift, the intermediate slope. I got knocked unconscious by the chairlift. I am not making that up. Some of you look at me and think, how could that happen? Let me explain. I was in my ready position as I had been taught. Notice the knees are slightly flexed, shoulders are square. Face is lathered with anticipation. <laughs> From behind me, somebody yelled, look out! Now you know when you hear the words look out, you don't duck, you turn around to see what it is you're looking out for. Turned around just in time to get my skull caved in. What'd you say? <laughs> And the insurance company wouldn't co cover the head injury. The guy called me up at home. You got hit in the head with a chairlift? I go, yes, sir. He goes, well, that makes you a moron. We consider that a pre-existing condition. <laughs> Two years ago, she signed us up for a health club. She thought that would be fun. That'll be fun. Two years, I've been there once. Drive by it every day, it's right on the way to Cinnabon. <laughs> I had to go in for an orientation program, right? My orientator, Todd, came out. Todd. <laughs> hi, Jeff, I'm 2% body fat Todd. <laughs> well, hi, 2%, I'm 80% mushy Jeff. <laughs> and he flexed and he went, Nautilus did that. Oh, yeah? Well, haagen is doing this. What do you think I got? <laughs> First question he asked me, how long has it been since I had an exercise program? Well, let me ponder that one, Tato. Yeah, 48, that would make it 48 years, nine months. My mom said I was so lazy they had to induce labor to get me moving. So Todd looks at me with a straight face. He goes, well, you might want to start out a little slow. So I'm sleeping with ankle weights on right now. Never know, you might roll over and burn a calorie or two. <laughs> Come on, we'd all exercise if the weight we gained was in a more uncomfortable place on our bodies. Where do we gain weight? Our stomachs and our bodies. <laughs> it's not in our way, is it? A couple pounds on your forehead, that would get you to a gym, wouldn't it? <laughs> Man, I can't see nothing. People would be laughing at you too, wouldn't they? Hey, Skull Master, you want a Krispy Kreme? That <laughs> ah, goes right to my head. <laughs> I don't understand this country's obsession with weight. To me, weight is nothing but a number, that's it. And everybody in this room has a number that makes them feel good about themselves. The key is to just stand on a scale and look at your number. Well, I bought a digital scale. Those numbers gradually build up to your correct weight. You can jump off any time. <laughs> See your number? Get off the scale, man. Why torture yourself? Who needs that kind of punishment? 155, that's all I'm weighing this week. <laughs> now, honey, I may not look it, but I lost 45 pounds last night. <laughs> and my wife's dieting now. That means we're all dieting. That's the rule. I gotta sneak cookies in my house like I'm some kind of criminal. <laughs> Go down in the basement with the boys and I'm handing them out to the kids. One of you will betray me. <laughs> I'm not sure, but it will be the three-year-old Judas, I'm sure. <laughs> she came home with rice cakes for dessert. You believe that? Rice cakes? You see the word cake, you think, well, okay, maybe. You ever bite into one of them things? Cake doesn't come to mind. <laughs> hey, cock would be a better word. <laughs> Who's she kidding? It's not food, it's insulation. <laughs> well, we could save a few bucks, just eat the styrofoam penis that came with your thigh master. <laughs> that are awful. Our dog went and uh, ate about nine of those rice cakes. <laughs> Hour later, went in the yard and passed the thermos. And our dog can use a diet, our dog. <laughs> Kids keep feeding the dog, man. He's so fat, he can't even bark anymore. <laughs> the doorbell rings, you hear a wheeze, it's just eh. 
keep telling the kids, you're gonna blow that dog up, man. Dogs don't have an off button when it comes to food, do they? Ever see a dog look at a bowl of food and go, ooh, gotta watch my hips. <laughs> Put in frolic yesterday. <laughs> Our dog's a dachshund, 12-year-old dachshund, 12 years old. At that age, they're not dogs, he's a throw rope. If he didn't break wind, we wouldn't know he was alive half the time. <laughs> and he's so fat, his stomach drags on the floor. One day he got so excited, he ran across the rug, he set himself on fire. That was bad. <laughs> you're gonna slow down, you're gonna burn the house down. <laughs> Just stay, I'll move the Twinkie Crumb over to you. <laughs> My wife's pet, she has all the pet. Came home with a pot belly pig about eight, six, six years ago. <laughs> pot belly pig in my house. Every day would begin at 5.30 in the morning with that pig banging its snout on our bedroom door. <laughs> Followed by an even louder, feed the pig! I'm a little cranky in the morning. <laughs> we gotta get rid of the pig. You know, kids don't know what happened. We're eating one night. You know, Daddy, what happened to pig? Be quiet, eat your ham. <laughs> my wife loves pet. Bought a cat, my wife did. Bought a cat. Bought a cat. <laughs> Lord knows you can't get a free cat anywhere in North America. <laughs> Oh, man, we live in Tennessee. They're falling out of pickup trucks all over the state. <laughs> Came in the house with a litter box. Well, that's what our home needed, more poop. Between <laughs> the dog, the pig, and the baby's diapers. You know, the house doesn't smell bad enough, sweetheart. If you can get a pet cow, he'll just crash on the couch. <laughs> my house smells so bad, my friends won't come in my house anymore. Standing on the porch. Come on in, Mike. No, what are you gonna live in there, a yak? Come on, man. <laughs> So my wife knows I hate the litter box. So she brings home an article from a magazine. You can buy a kit that you can put on your toilet bowl. You can potty train your cat. I can't get the three-year-old Lucifer to use the toilet. But I'm gonna get this lower form of life to use my facilities. How festive is that gonna be at 3 a.m.? <laughs> Who's in the bathroom? <laughs> I don't think so. All right, how do you lock the door? <laughs> Cat comes out dragging a feel and stream behind him. <laughs> I don't like this cat. I don't know why he runs up my chest at five o'clock in the morning just to breathe that stinking tuna breath all over me. <laughs> With that motor going, that. <laughs> Apparently he's waking me up so he can spin around and show me his tail. No, honey, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble bonding with the cat. You know, maybe if you let him brush his backside up against your nostril a few mornings. <laughs> might give you a little perspective. I think the cat's trying to kill me. My wife says I'm paranoid. There are mornings he'll put both paws into my windpipe. <laughs> and start going back and forth. But I know what he's thinking. If I had thumbs, you'd be a dead man. <laughs> My dream is one day the kids come into the bedroom. The, all three boys, each holding a cat leg. <laughs> Daddy, kitty broke. <laughs> man can dream, can he? <laughs> all right, you got boys, I'll tell you what, you got to get your house set up. Hardest part was childproof in our home. I'll tell you what, man. We, my wife and I, we finally just took a hammer, smashed everything of value to us. <laughs> pressure was too much. And a Hummel? <laughs> we have three boys. We're a praying family, by the way, my wife and I. We believe in the power of prayer. So when we were going to have children, we prayed for patience, tolerance, love, and understanding. Four virtues we feel are God-given. God has his own way of answering prayers. <laughs> We didn't get one ADHD child, two, and it looks like we're up to three in a row. 
Found out our oldest, who's 20 years old now, found out he was hyperactive when the kindergarten called to tell us he was hyper. Like we didn't know. <laughs> Is there a parent of a hyper kid here that gets a call? Your son's hyper. No! <laughs> He's so calm at home. First day we dropped him off at kindergarten, it was all we could do to keep from laughing. <laughs> Some perky woman came over. We'll have so much fun. I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> we're, gonna go, we're gonna go pick up an answering machine. We'll see you later. <laughs> I don't know why, but I felt I'd be screening calls between 8 and 3 for the rest of my life. <laughs> Principal calls me at home. He goes, your boy won't sit in his chair. He's disrupting the class. We don't know what to do. Oh, open the back door and let him loose. That's what we do at home. <laughs> Come back when he's tired, he always does. Check his hair for ticks, he crawls through the shrubbery. <laughs> Kindergarten, what's he gonna miss? Coloring? He'll catch up. <laughs> ADHD, attention deficit hyperactive disorder. I like that. It's polite. Forty years ago, when I was bouncing off the grade school walls, they didn't have a name for it, did they? I was OLP. Noxious little punk, that's what they call me. <laughs> Teachers would drag me out in the hall and slam me against lockers. I had one teacher headbutt me. <laughs> Miss Stokesbury, I'll never forget it. <laughs> she said, I hate you, bam! <laughs> She'd shake me in her, she was overweight, her cheeks would vibrate like jello. <laughs> You're hyper -ang. all I could focus on was the vibrating cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh at me, you little punk! Stop shaking, jello cheeks. My favorite teacher, Mr. Greganis, this is how he dealt with my hyperactivity problem. Came to me, he goes, you know what your problem is? I always love that too, when you're eight or nine years old. Don't you love it when an adult looks at a nine-year-old boy and goes, you know what your problem is? Just once I want to hear the nine-year-old go, oh, enlighten me. <laughs> I've been wondering. <laughs> so he goes, you know what your problem is? You don't know how to focus. He goes, you gotta focus. <laughs> I'm nine years old going like this. He goes, yeah, just like that, you gotta focus. That was our salute for an entire school year. I'd act up in class, he'd go, Jeff, I'd go. <laughs> and he'd say, that's right. He'd salute me. You think that's odd, but I'll tell you what, I had 12 years of public school. Couldn't tell you when this country was founded. I need to make a three-foot putt. <laughs> they wanted to put my boy on Ridley. I didn't even know what that was. We go to the psychologist. He spends an hour with him. He says, we should put him on Ritalin. I said, what's that? He says, it's an amphetamine. Sure. <laughs> Based on my family's history of alcohol and drug abuse, let's get the kid on the crank as soon as possible. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you this. If that boy of mine had one chromosome from my side of the family, he'd have been 10 years old going, you know, Dad, I don't think the five milligrams are doing it for me anymore. <laughs> I should we go to 10 milligrams, double that script to 60. What do you think about that one day? What do you think about that? What do you think about that? What do you think about that? Poor kid, he mowing along with scissors at 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Neighbors had comment, he is an ambitious little one, isn't he? <laughs> He's cheap to feed, too. He hasn't had a full meal in three years. Son, come on in, it's time for your Dorito. We passed on the crank. We tried to do it with a better diet. The problem with our diet at home, my wife didn't believe sugar had any effect on his behavior. Came home with Kool-Aid because it had vitamin C in it. So does Lemon Pledge. Then she bought Cocoa Puffs. Cocoa Puffs, there's a way to send your hyper one off to school. Two or three Jethro Bodine bowls full of that rocket fuel. Just lay in the couch and wait for the phone calls to start pouring in. First one will come in from the bus driver. What are you raising, a moth? Just come down here and pick a little ricochet up for us. I got teenagers now. Let me tell you something, too. I believe teenagers are God's revenge on mankind. If God himself said, well, let's see how they like it to create someone of their own image who denies their existence. As I've looked, nowhere in the Bible does it mention how old the devil was when he rejected God's authority. My guess would be 15.
My 15-year-old comes to me about a month ago. This is what he says to me. I need your opinion on this. So I said, uh, what is it? That's what he says to me. I don't know if I should get my tongue pierced or not. <laughs> you don't know? Well, I'm glad you came to me, son. I can help you clear this up pretty quick. Let's just lay your tongue on a table, man. I'll whack it with a hammer. How's that? And when the swelling goes down, if you're still a little foggy, I can hit it again. And I can keep hitting it till some kind of light bulb goes on in that skull of yours, boy. Ever just want to boink your kids right in the eyes? I don't know if I should get my tongue pierced. You don't? Pete, come here. Pierced and everything. I'll tell you what, I grew up in America, and I know, before the lawyers took over, where if a kid wanted to maim himself, we had a lot of ways of maiming ourselves. Remember BB gun fights? Remember those? What do you shoot beer cans for about an hour and one kid goes, you know, we can shoot each other. <laughs> and everybody in our neighborhood had them CO2 gas-powered pistols. My mother gets me a Daisy One Pump. Familiar with that? <laughs> Guys know what I'm talking about. Went about six feet with an arc. <laughs> I had a sparrow in the head once, didn't even wake the bird up. <laughs> my buddies had them CO2, those things go through concrete. My Daisy wouldn't penetrate Cool Whip. And my dad calls up, wanted to buy my son a BB gun. That's what he said, can I get your boys BB guns? I said, yeah, pick his little brother up a set of glass eyes. <laughs> my, my son goes, I won't shoot my brother. I said, if you didn't shoot your brother, I'd have you in for a psychiatric evaluation. <laughs> I shot my sister so many times, she told her husband that her cellulite was BB wounds for me. <laughs> And he believed her, so who's the moron in this conversation? <laughs> what you did to your sister's thighs. <laughs> it's no secret, man. Your parents pray long and hard that your children drive you insane. <laughs> My father calls me up. I can get him drums. What do you want to know? Can I get him drums? Yeah, pick his brothers up a set of bagpipes. <laughs> that way my wife and I can just river dance our way to the loony bin. <laughs> my mother doesn't even hide it anymore. I'll call her in the middle of the afternoon. Mom, these kids are driving me nuts. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> my dad calls me up late at night just to laugh at me. Tell me again how your boys wash the car with your Armani jacket. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> Tell me how your boys love hitting rocks with your new set of irons. <laughs> That's too bad. Because <laughs> they like the sparks. <laughs> Tell me how your boys have lost every tool you've ever purchased. <laughs> No, son, the doctor just told me two more grandkids. I get off of Prozac altogether. <laughs> He's a sick, warped man. Psychologists say you marry one of your parents. Give you four little youngsters something to think about. If I had a hazard of gas, I'd say I married my father. i say that far away from my wife. They don't get along. <laughs> she has his temper. She has my, my wife has a temper, and I mean a temper. I'm not talking irritability and sarcasm. That's what attracted me to her. There for 20 years. See, you got to understand, it's, it, it, it's how you argue determines how, how long you stay married. It's about communicating, understanding, and understand how your spouse communicates. It took me two years of marriage to figure out my wife will never tell me to do anything around our home. She wants me to do something, she'll ask me a question. From the question, I'm supposed to stand there and figure out what it is she wants me to do. <laughs> Simple example, say I leave a pair of my underwear in the middle of the bedroom floor, which frosts my wife. It's her word, not mine. Someone will cut her off on the highway. Oh, that just froths me. 
And if I'm not frosting her, I'm driving her up a wall. Kids will come in, where's mom? She's up the wall with frostbite, that's all I know. <laughs> you won't believe what put her there, son. It was that pair of underwear in the middle of the bedroom floor. You were looking at the most powerful pair of underwear known to mankind. They not only defy gravity, but they can change temperatures. And they're mine. So I leave my drawers in the middle of the room, which, by the way, is not unusual, because when I was a single man, I learned how to walk out of my underwear on the way to the shower. You get to the end, you hop right out of them babies. Right? And you leave them in the middle of the room for a good reason. You always have your underwear inventory at your fingertips. If there's eight on the floor, it must be four in the drawer. It's a good system. Worked for me for years. Then I got married and found out my system frosts it's my wife. So I leave my drawers in the middle of the room. Would my wife come to me and say to me, pick those up? Three words. Pick those up. Would she say them? No, because that would be simple, direct, and right to the point. And at that moment, I, her husband, would know exactly what she wants from me. I'd be able to process the information, make a rational decision as to whether or not I could deliver the request. At that moment, we would be communicating at the highest human level, the way God intended it, through language. My wife will look at me, look at my underwear, and then ask me, are those yours? <laughs> sure hope they are, otherwise I got a few questions of my own. <laughs> what do you want? That's the only question a man has, isn't it, guys? That's it. What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Quit talking in code and tell me what you want. <laughs> if I have to tell you what I want, then it doesn't mean a whole lot to me now, does it? <laughs> Many a night I've walked around my home with a coat hanger strapped to my skull. Boys are going, what are you doing, Dad? I'm trying to divine what your mother wants. <laughs> I'm telling you there's a signal in this home somewhere. Some things haven't changed, and you have to learn to accept. Closet vision. My wife has had closet vision for the entire 20 years of our marriage. She does nothing to try to get rid of it. Maybe some of you understand this. We'll have a date to go out. She goes through the same ritual every time. She gets in the shower, she gets out of the shower. She wraps herself in a towel, she stands in front of her mirror, does her hair, does her makeup. And she goes to her closet, and she goes blind for an hour. <laughs> I'm telling you, Jeff, there's nothing to wear in here. <laughs> Every now and then, she'll come out of the closet holding something. What do you think of that? I think that's beautiful. Oh, you're just saying that. You're right, you caught me again. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to get to the restaurant before they changed management one more time. <laughs> it's amazing how quick her vision comes back once she's dressed, because that's when she'll look over at me and go, Ooh, you're not wearing those clothes out, are you? <laughs> these, no, these are my practice clothes. <laughs> Only had them on for the last hour and a half. <laughs> Went out of style while I was waiting for you to get dressed. <laughs> get in silly arguments when you're married. My favorite argument, we were married about three, four months over a roaster chicken. <laughs> Only married people would fight over a roaster chicken. <laughs> I'd gone to take a nap, which I've since learned is a huge mistake. <laughs> God forbid I'm actually rested at any one point during this entire marriage. <laughs> so much harder to manipulate a well-rested, rational thinking man. So it's easier to get what you want when his eyes are burning out of his cranium from lack of sleep. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want, honey, I don't care. I really don't care. I'm just, I'm just, I'm like a horse, I can sleep standing up now at Disneyland. <laughs> now, I've gone to take a nap. I don't know if I was asleep five minutes, five hours. All I know is I'm waking up to the sound of a vacuum cleaner in my bedroom. <laughs> I'm napping, she's vacuuming. <laughs> Apparently, I wasn't waking up quick enough. She starts to go under our bed. We have a water bed. There is no under our bed. <laughs> now I'm 
kind of rocking on the high C. <laughs> and maybe there was something on the pillow, maybe there wasn't. <laughs> All I know is that my hair is getting sucked into the attachment. <laughs> That was 20 years ago. To this day, her reaction still surprises me. Oh, you're awake. <laughs> yeah. She says, good, chicken's done. <laughs> You'll have to back up, I missed something. She said, no, you said you'd carve the chicken if I cooked the chicken. I cooked the chicken, the chicken's done. Go out and carve the chicken, I'm hungry. Then they said the dumbest thing a newly married man could say to his young wife. I said, I never said that. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. If you're a newlywed in this room, buddy, your wife said you said it, you said it. Don't even go down that road. <laughs> I didn't know any better. I was new. I never said that. Oh, yes, you did. I did not. Yes, you did. I did not say that. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. No, I did. <laughs> then my brain started coming back. And I remembered exactly what I said to her. I said, I'll tell you what I said. I said, if I'm awake when the chicken's done, I'll carve the chicken for you. I didn't say, come suck my brain out of my skull with the vacuum attachment and wake me up to carve the chicken. I'll pause here while you all choose a team. I'll tell you how stupid I was at that point in my marriage. I thought that was the end of the discussion. Made my point, I rolled over. I turned my back on my young wife. <gasps> She got on the bed, both knees. Get up. You said you'd carve a chicken. Get up there and carve a chicken. Then I said, you know, I don't know how to carve a chicken. I never carved a chicken my entire life. Why don't you carve a chicken? You can mutilate it just as easily as I could. <laughs> she says, I don't know how to carve a chicken either. And he said, you carved a chicken. Get up there and carve a chicken. You're not going back to sleep till you carved a chicken. You hear what I said? <laughs> <laughs> what is this about? I just was. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll carve your chicken. Now I'm walking to the kitchen. I'm not married four months. I'm a mumbling idiot like those old guys in Florida. I'm just mumbling. Why do you lousy chicken? When you want chicken? Chicken, you go to Kentucky Fried Chicken. They carve it for you. It's just lousy. <laughs> now I'm in the kitchen. I'm in the kitchen. I'm not in a good mood. I got a knife. I got a bird. I got a fork. I'm trying to figure this thing out. In comes my wife who just told me she didn't know how to carve a chicken. Well, apparently there was a chicken carving class somewhere between our bedroom and the kitchen. Because that knife wasn't even on the bird and every man in this room knows what happened next. Another set of hands appear out of nowhere. You're doing it all wrong. Let me show you how to do it. I stabbed the chicken with the fork. Now I'm waving it at her. You know, I'm saying, now she grabs it like we're wrestling over the stupid bird in the kitchen. And it falls off and lands on her hair and it falls on the floor. Ooh. You'd have thought I shot her with an M16. On the phone with her father, Daddy, he's an animal! <laughs> that was 20 years ago. To this day, we'll be at parties and she'll tell people, you know, he tried to kill me once with a chicken. <laughs> In her version, I whip it at her skull at 100 miles an hour. It's all about communicating. My favorite question. Six months we're married. I'm leaving the house. I got golf clubs on my shoulder. I got golf shoes in my hand. I'm walking through my living room, and every woman in this room knows what my wife asked me. Where are you going? <laughs> I was only married a few months. I looked at her. I said, I'm going bowling, Columbo. <laughs> that would be the wrong answer. <laughs> Two hours later, I was still in my living room. Come on, baby, please. Just tell me what this is about. You hurry, honey, I can make the back nine. Come on. <laughs> it's about the right answer, that's what it's about. It's about knowing why your beautiful, intelligent wife would ask such a ridiculous question. Today, 20 years later, if I'm leaving my house with golf clubs on my shoulder and golf shoes in my hand, and I'm walking through my living room and my wife goes, where are you going? Oh, I'm gonna put these in the car, honey, then I'm gonna come back and mow our lawn. That's where I'm going. <laughs> right. The first thing my wife did when we got married was take my spine away from me. <laughs> Keeps it in her purse. <laughs> Give it back if I have to do something manly. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning, I heard a noise. Well, here's your spine, go down and see what it was. 
Well, I hate that, man. Wake up call, heard something downstairs. Some nights I put on the noise uniform. That's her bathrobe and big fuzzy slippers. Make sure I'm looking tough in case the bad guy's down there. My theory is a guy will look at me and go, wow, I don't even want to meet the man that married you. <laughs> she should go down there. If the guy tracked mud on the living room rub, she'd kill him where he stood. <laughs> She's gotten tougher, man. She started menopause about a year and a half ago. <laughs> There are nights now that I lie in bed and dream about the good old days of PMS, trust me. I'm sorry, but I can't get my home cold enough for my wife. <laughs> she spends half the week on the phone with the air conditioning guy. It's broken again, I'm telling you, it's broken. It's not broken, there's not enough freedom in the world for that woman. If there's a hole in the ozone, it's over the roof of my home in Fairview, trust me. It's 48 degrees in my house, I'm hanging meat off the curtain rods. And then she wakes me up to feel her night sweats. Is that necessary? <laughs> Just laying there sleeping, she'll zip my parka open. Just zip it right open. <laughs> feel this, it's disgusting. <laughs> Just laying here, there's like a furnace in me or something. <laughs> well, you're lucky you don't have to go through with this. No, I wouldn't if you quit waking me up. Told her, boys, you gotta watch out. Mom's going through some stuff. She's like, what? Those nights you don't do your homework right away, she get mad and yell at you? Said, yeah. Said, be a little different now. She might start crying and then stab you. <laughs> all I'm saying, you see your mother sweating, hide all the sharp pencils. That's all I'm telling you. Man. <laughs> it's getting goofy. We were eating breakfast one morning. Her and I just sitting at the breakfast table. My mistake that morning was sitting there thinking that everything was fine. <laughs> Might have been whistling, could explain why I didn't hear her ticking. <laughs> I just wanted a butter a waffle. Some of you know what I'm talking about, I just want a butter a waffle. No talking family business, no nothing, just butter a waffle. <laughs> I said, sweetheart, could you pass me the butter knife? thinking something must be bothering Buttercup. <laughs> so I asked, something on your mind? She says, I'm fat. <laughs> Every man in this room knows you can't respond to that one, boy. <laughs> At this point, a twitch of the eye is gonna get you killed. <laughs> you ever hear your wife say she's fat? You better become mannequin man. move a muscle and you don't say anything. <laughs> Worst thing you could say is, well, maybe if you laid off the brownies for breakfast. <laughs> and never mention that ice cream's not supposed to go in slim fast. <laughs> Who knew that would cause such a tizzy? <laughs> the key here is keep your mouth shut, just let her finish her sentence, dig the knife out of the wall, butter the wall. <laughs> and she says, we're joining a health club. Did you hear what I said? I think I heard you say you're fat and we're joining the health club. <laughs> Another wrong answer. <laughs> Spoon. That's <laughs> when we joined the health club. Let me tell you something. If there are two people that inhabit this entire planet that should have never purchased a health club membership, it is my wife and I. Talk about lazy. We've woken our children up to get the remote for the TV. <laughs> We've had an exercise bike in our bedroom for 11 years. It's got a mile and a half on it. <laughs> Most of that was put on by the baby sitting on the floor spinning the pedals. <laughs> and last month, she made a cellular phone call from our driveway to me in the house. She asked me to bring her her purse. <laughs> what do you do with that call? Hello, get my purse. Where are you at? I'm in the driveway, going to the health club, and I need my ID. <laughs> How lazy are you? <laughs> hey, go get your mother's purse and bring it to her. Man. <laughs> Good night, folks. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you.